welcome to Commission Ed, the Air Force Officer Podcast. Here we explore the training and development of America's leaders in the application of air power and the profession of arms. The views expressed are those of the hosts and do not reflect the official policy or position of the United States Air Force, Department of Defense, or the U.S. government. The mention of companies by name is solely for the purpose of discussion and should not be implied as endorsement. Welcome back to another episode of Commission Ed, the Air Force Officer Podcast. I'm Colin Slade. And I'm Reed Gann, and we're your hosts for Commission Ed. All right, Reed. I don't think we ever expected that we would make it this far, but no. here we are. Yep. Year three. Doing a review of year three. Unreal. Still can't believe it. <laughs> it really, truly is. Especially when you consider all that has happened over the last year for both of us for the podcast. And that's why we're here, right? We want to have this conversation. Look back at what's happened over the last year, look forward to what's coming next and uh, have this conversation with each other, bring the audience in, you know, pull the curtain aside, let people see a little bit what goes on in the production of this podcast. And we talk about the importance of goals. Well, this is also our opportunity to do that, but it shows the consistency and necessity of assessing self, seeing what the information is showing you. So I think with that, let's just kind of get down to some of the big numbers here. Yeah. The first, Colin, we're knocking the door at 155,000 downloads of all time. Yeah. Certainly by the time that this episode comes out, we will have surpassed 155, possibly 160,000 downloads. Yeah. And for this year alone, our third year was our biggest year ever, 54K. So yeah, it's still growing, Colin. Which is really interesting because what did we say at the beginning of last year? We said that we were going to do half as many episodes, right? We said that we were going to move away from the weekly episode release, create some space for us to think about the information, the content a little bit more, both for you and me personally, professionally, but also for the audience to have a little bit of time between each episode to think a little bit more deeply on the topics that were covered. And so even with half as many episodes, the audience listened to the podcast more than they did when there were weekly episodes. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what to make of that. I, I, well, I think it worked. Yeah. I think that's what to make of it is that it worked. Now, can't really say for certain whether if we had continued to do weekly episodes, would we have doubled our downloads? I personally don't think so, because, again, I think that there is something to be gained from creating white space, allowing yourself to step back from the thing that you're engaged in and saturate, incubate, illuminate. Right. We talked about that last year and we'll bring that up again later. You know, but we can't prove that for certain. It's a theory. We see fruit of the effort. But here we are. Yeah. So on that, the top five episodes for the year, we like to look back and see what is it that really struck a chord with you, our audience. And this one really struck me, Colin. Our number one episode for the year is a rebroadcast mm -hmm. of a series that you and I both felt was really important, but right. in years past, our audience didn't agree with us, <laughs> <laughs> didn't get a lot of listens, but the second go around, it really did. And that was Leading Airmen by our interview with Scheffler. I thought that was really interesting. Yeah, for sure. Because as you said, when we originally released that series of episodes about commander responsibilities and what is valued in an officer, the audience at the time, maybe it's a different audience at this point, maybe it's the same audience and they realized their mistake earlier. <laughs> when it was first released, there was not a whole lot of interest in that particular episode on leading airmen. But yeah, definitely this time around. And you know, let's give credit where credit is due. Lieutenant Colonel Tim Scheffler, amazing human, great interview. That was his second appearance on the podcast. And so the topic, the person, you know, the context, the timing, I don't know, all of these different things may have come together to make that our most popular episode for the year. Yeah. So our next four in order, uh, fighter squadron culture. That was a fun one. That was fun. And, you know, I don't know, Air Force flying pilot things. 
I guess I can. That makes sense. <laughs> right. Um, the next two, though, and this will tie in later as we review our goals from last year, uh, were about being commanders. So mm -hmm. how to be a commander and what is a commander? Those were uh, number three and four. And then our fifth most popular episode was about being a flight surgeon. The interview we did with my friend Matt Hoyt. Yeah, some really great information there. If you are listening to this episode today and you haven't listened to any of those, we invite you to go check them out because there's some really great stories, great information about officership, about the Air Force, about culture, how to create a culture and the role that the officer plays in each of those different things. So if you haven't listened to them, please go do so. If you have, go listen to them again, you know, continue to make them the most popular for a reason. So last year, Colin, at our year two review, we really went into the weeds about like geography but we've gotten enough countries and enough states and U.S. territories that I'm not going to, you know, go deep, deep, deep. But I do want to hit the top five cities because there was a little bit of a shift. Yeah. But the rest of the cities are pretty much the same. So we're yeah. hitting military people and military towns. So top cities of all time, Atlanta, Georgia, Columbus, Ohio. Shout out to my Ohio peeps. That's right. Uh, San Antonio, Texas, Dallas, Texas, and Las Vegas, Nevada. So those are our top five cities of all time where our audience are located. And there are big military installations in each of one of those. So no real surprises there. Yeah. You know what was the biggest surprise for me this year, Colin? And that's what we're going to talk about next. YouTube. Uh-huh. So one of the big goals you laid out last year, and we'll review all our goals from last year in a minute, but one of them was to create and publish a bunch of videos on YouTube. That has, I can't even describe how crazy that experience has been. Why don't you yeah. start going through some of the numbers? You've been deep into these a lot more than I have. Why don't you kind of take this one? Yeah. Okay. So at the beginning of last year, we had, we didn't even have a YouTube channel. <laughs> so there's that data point, right? But you and I in April of 2021, we got together and produced a series of different short form videos on content that we had already covered before. But the fact that it was in a studio, it was short form. It was more towards like the YouTube algorithm and demographic, right? YouTube does have some long form stuff, but podcasts like this one, you know, in our typical way of things don't necessarily live on YouTube, but the short form stuff does. So we put those videos together, launched the channel beginning of September. And over the last year, that channel was viewed. Our videos were viewed 75,000 times. What? <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? So just to put this in context, in three years, our podcast has had roughly, we'll, we'll say 160, 160,000 downloads. Yeah. In a single year, our YouTube channel did almost 50% of that. Yeah. Holy smokes. And it gets even more interesting when you drill down into individual videos. Right. Our top video has three times the number of views as our best podcast. And that podcast was probably downloaded by bots. <laughs> right. <laughs> so the amount of eyeballs and attentions that are available on YouTube is staggering to me. Totally yeah, staggering. Part of the YouTube demographic or what's available, you know, the eyeballs that are on YouTube is that, you know, other channels will get a lot of views from outside the United States. You know, there's huge populations in India and Indonesia and, you know, I don't know exactly what the YouTube allowance in China is, but there's a lot more people outside the United States than there is inside, right? But if you look at our demographics, the information about our audience that are consuming these videos that are watching them, almost all of them are coming from the United States. And anything that's outside of the United States is probably people who are at military installations Oconus, right? Yeah. We're still hitting the same age, gender demographic that lines up with our podcast, which as we explored in our year two review lines squarely up with the people attending our OTC, maybe looking to go to OTS. The stereotypical military aged male is who are overwhelmingly viewing. And mm -hmm. interesting thing though, too, in YouTube, it gives you lots of nerdy details about how people are finding your stuff. Yeah. The biggest thing is that people are searching for the content. They're right. in YouTube searching for this type of information. And it just goes to show, Colin, this is something that 
you know, we felt there was an audience and there is, and they are looking for this information. Yeah, definitely within YouTube, but also like Google and Bing searches are bringing them to YouTube to find and consume our content. And what is it that they're looking for? I don't think that there are any surprises here. They're looking for information about OTS, Officer Training School, UPT, Undergraduate Pilot Training. Now, this one was interesting to me. Other than pilot, the most popular career field that people were looking into, and by far the greatest number of emails and direct messages that we receive through social media are about intelligence officers. What yeah. do you think about that one, Reed? So I'm biased. Um, <laughs> it, and it's no. hard. Yeah, I know. It's hard to remove that. I do feel, however, that we are entering a second great era of intelligence and information warfare. And people can feel it. Yeah. We are moving away from the global war on terror, from kinetic active wars and into wars where information and intelligence are the war. And so yeah. I think the audience can perceive that. I think they can see that that's where we're going. And so that's my perspective. I'll just leave how awesome I think Intel is out of this. But, you know, that's that's <laughs> what I'm thinking. I'm not going to argue on either of those points. I agree wholeheartedly that there has been a palpable shift in the way that operations are conducted and the central critical importance of good intelligence and information. And so, great, let's get more better people to come be intelligence officers. Yeah. Obviously not everybody will be in Intel and we need good and better people to be pilots, to be uh, combat systems operators, to be space operators, to be combat support, the force support, security forces, logistics, civil engineering, all those other things, right? But hey, let's get the best talent that we can into the service so that we can conduct that information warfare as best as possible. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I think the biggest surprise for me from this last year has been YouTube, been mind blowing. So Colin, why don't we now kind of do a quick year in review, mm -hmm. review our goals from last year, and then we'll set up our goals for this next year. Okay. So I'll start with my year in review. Honestly, it's not been too cosmic. I'm still in the same <laughs> job. Well, especially when we compare to what your year looked like as you sit here calling me from a temporary living facility and we'll get to that. Yeah. I'm still in the same job. It's fantastic. It's been everything I could have hoped for from this type What's of- What's your job? So I'm the director of operations at the Signals Analysis Squadron at the National Air and Space Intelligence Center in Wright Pat in Dayton, Ohio. Is it still the National Air and Space Intelligence Center or has that now transitioned? So there is a National Space Intelligence Center, NSIC, but NASIC will not be changing its name. Okay. So in the same way that the Department of the Air Force also has a space force within it. The National Air and Space Intelligence Center also has a space intelligence center kind of within it in the same weird, I'm my own thing, but not sort of way. So they rely on, you know, just as any other organization does, they rely on facilities, they rely on money, they rely on security, all those other support functions in order to function. Well, those are coming from the National Air and Space Intelligence Agency, not themselves. So in that way, they're kind of apart, but not. Yeah. Smart people are still trying to figure it out. So I'll, I'll let them do that. But yeah, still at NASIC, still really loving it. I've got amazing people in the squadron and it really makes it easy to go to work every day. I think the biggest thing that happened at work is we had a change of command. We did an episode all about how those work. It's been a fantastic experience. I guess the biggest news in our house is that I was recently notified that I was selected to go to intermediate developmental education in residence and feel very grateful for that. I was selected to attend the National Intelligence University in Bethesda, Maryland, and we will be moving in the summer of 23, and I will start class as a full-time student, which is a dream. Yeah. One, you get to go back to the D.C. area, which you just came from, so you're not venturing completely off into the unknown again, right? Yeah. And then to be able to take some time off from the grind of doing ops, being a DO, and be able to focus on the academic side. Again, we're going to get into a little bit more of this later, but I think that's 
exactly what you've been wanting, you've been hoping for. And you know, congratulations to you. Being selected for in-residence school is always awesome. And then to be able to go to a prestigious program like NIU is really cool. Yeah, thanks, man. We're super excited. And like you mentioned, getting back to DC is a huge goal for us. Give us a little bit of a semblance of place. Mm -hmm. Everybody who's grown up in the military will know when you ask, where are you from? like, how much time do you have? <laughs> That's usually a pretty simple question to answer. But for my kids, we're starting to kind of develop a little sense of identity around the NCR. So looking forward to getting back there. Very good. All right, Colin, this is where you kick off a pretty significant segment of this episode because your year has been nuts. Yeah. So when we started this year three, I was working for a company called Barbell Logic as their director of external relations, having a great time doing that. Unfortunately, they had to eliminate my position. And so I left that company in the end of October 21. And from there, basically have just been on orders with the reserve, with my unit, the 8th Space Warning Squadron since that time. And here we are recording the end of August of 2022. So I've been a traditional reservist on full-time orders basically since November of 21. Not what I was hoping for, but as I explain a little bit more about this last year, it's good. Like all good things, right? No hard feelings about uh, Barbell Logic or the folks that work there. Still grateful for what they are doing for the world, trying to make people stronger and wish them all the best. But for me, what have I been up to as I've been on orders? Well, that included a five-month TDY to Vandenberg Space Force Base, where I graduated the officer undergraduate space training, which meant that I have now reclassed or retrained from the civil engineering career field and earned a new AFSC, Air Force Specialty Code, the 13 Sierra Space Operations Officer. And so now on my uniform, like so many people who serve for a long period of time, I have multiple badges. Reed, I know you have two different badges on your uniform, occupational badges. Uh, now I do too. And the one that I have now are a set of spings, which is really cool because now I'm in operations, which I've never done before. And I've got a lot more still to learn. I've got mission qualification training uh, coming up here uh, in the fall. I'll be doing a round of seasoning on the ops floor for the Sibbers space-based infrared system mission. And Part of all that is I have also accepted a active guard reserve or AGR position with my squadron. And so now I'm full-time like permanent, <laughs> permanent full-time status with the 8th Space Warning Squadron, which it has included, oh, deep breath here. Yep. <laughs> has included a PCS, a permanent change of station to Buckley Space Force Base here in Aurora, Colorado. Oh man, it's been a lot. And there's more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm saving the big fireworks for the end, right? There you go, there you go. So that TDY, I was by myself, you know, to uh, Vandenberg by myself for those five months, came back and then immediately started packing up to move my wife, my three boys here to, to Buckley. And oh, by the way, my wife is... Now, as we're recording 31 weeks pregnant, she's going to deliver a baby girl this fall. And so, man, it has been a roller coaster of excitement, of frustration, of huge amounts of change, big emotions, both wonderful and frustrating and just all the things, right? We are having an, an adventure over here, for yeah. sure. <laughs> And again, we kind of hinted at this, but you're recording from the temporary lodging facility there at Buckley. Yes, I am. You are still in suitcases. Yes, we are. Okay. Yeah. And we will be for a couple more weeks. We have a great rental lined up, but it just adds to the stress of all of these things. Yep. Um, the idea of, you know, we haven't sold our house. We're keeping our house back in Utah, but we got to find somebody to live there and rent there as we find a place to rent here. And, you know, people talk about like how they want to get off active duty and join the reserve because it, things are going to be so much easier, you know, much less stress, which, you know, if you're going to be a traditional reservist or an IMA, yeah, that's probably true. 
but you know, <laughs> it nothing's permanent. Yeah. <laughs> and why do we do this? Why do we do this to ourselves? Because we feel that there is, there's that calling, there's that reason that we want to continue to serve in some capacity, you know, as a reservist that could be part-time, it could be full-time, you're still on active duty, so you're definitely full-time, uh, probably even more so with the position that you're in. But this is what we feel called to do. And if ever you feel the calling to do something else, do it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You don't have to do this. But if you do, you understand that you're going to have years like mine where it's just pure craziness. And that's okay. Yeah. I think that's a really good way to segue into our review of our goals from last year. Yeah. Because <laughs> we set the stage well. It will explain. It's the context <laughs> for where we're headed, right? So let's just kick off with a couple things that we feel pretty good about. So we moved the podcast and we said we were going to publish every other week. Check. Nailed it. Absolutely. Uh, feel really good about that. Colin, you said you were going to create a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Nailed it, right? And yeah. it's been exploding, which has been fantastic. I mentioned I wanted to get better at posting, at least having the plan earlier in the week so that I wasn't scrambling on Friday for my weekly post. I'm going to give myself a four out of five on that. I feel pretty confident that I did really well, but there were definitely a few weeks I missed some. Yeah. And then some that I'm, you know, on the ride home from work Friday at 7 p.m. I'm like, oh, I need to come up with a plan. But overwhelmingly, feel pretty good about that. So I'm going to give myself a four out of five. And the last one that we really crushed, and Colin, I feel super proud of this, yeah. is our series on command. So important that we did that, at least for me personally, I think also for you, Reed, I hope that the audience felt the gravitas of command through those episodes, through those interviews with those gentlemen, those sitting commanders in so many instances, multiple commands in many instances, right? That was a hugely important goal that we set for ourselves. And I, you know, pat on our own backs. We did well on that one. Yep. Well, where didn't we do so well? Well, yeah. So <laughs> the wheels kind of fell off the bus for just about everything else. We're going to. That's right. Well, but again, given the year you had, and we'll explain a little bit about my year. I said, you know, nothing really changed. Well, I didn't understand what I was getting into, but that's another story. So, yeah. So I had said that I wanted to do a newsletter in the off weeks of when we weren't publishing an episode. Well, that didn't happen. I wanted to be more engaged in the heritage room. Uh, I don't think I've even logged in. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> sorry, but not sorry. Yeah. Well, again, it was a crazy time. Colin, you mentioned about building the courses and the website. Now you did do a lot of tying together and unifying the look and feel of our various surfaces, if you will. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't know about the courses. Yeah. Just uh, a nope on yeah. that one. Okay. Uh, yeah. We'll just say nope. A hundred shirts. Yeah, no. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> and uh, we'll talk more about that yes. later too. Yeah, we will. But, uh, so yeah. a nope. big one that I wanted to do that I was really geared up for that I'd been speaking with my previous commander and, and brainstorming ideas. I wanted to come up with a book club. That's that's funny. Um, <laughs> that did not happen. I severely underestimated the DO life. Uh, when we recorded this, I had been on station last year when we recorded our year two and we'd come up with our goals. I'd been here for maybe two or three months. Yeah. And I thought I knew pretty much what I was going to face. Yep. I severely underestimated the busyness. And that's fine. But that's why that one did not happen. I'm just glad I'm here. <laughs> at this <Right>. point. Um, <laughs> and then our stretch goals, uh, you know, those were admittedly pie in the sky. We were going to try to get the chief of staff on. Didn't happen. Not even close. But we did get a general officer select. Yes. So that's still a pretty good. That was Colonel Mike Zulsdorf, who after we did the interview, he already knew, but we didn't, that he had been selected for Brigadier General. Yeah. So congratulations to him. And then I wanted to get a retweet or something from Doctrine Man. I went back, he tweets so often that it was like doom scrolling for hours to just see. Yeah. I didn't see a mention or anything, so I guess that didn't happen. Darn. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, great goals for the most part. We had done a good job. We had done our due diligence of making smart goals, you know, that were specific, measurable, attainable, all those things. 
But then, you know, sometimes life happens and you just got to be okay with that sometimes, you know, to be able to say, it's all right. That was important then. It's not now. Reframe, pivot, and move forward. And I think that's a good place for us to do some of that. You know, look back at what we've learned from those goals, from what we've seen in the data of the podcast over the last year, and share with the audience some of the things that we've learned during this last year of craziness. What do you think? Yeah, totally. And I've learned a ton. Absolutely have. And Mm -hmm. again, the thing I learned the most and that was the biggest shock for me is YouTube. YouTube literally has blown my mind. That is where the eyeballs are. That is where the attention is. That is where people are paying attention. That is where people are going for content. I mean, in such a short period of time, we have almost half of what it took us three years in podcast form to do. That's unreal. Yeah. And what really blows my mind about it is that the amount of content that is already on YouTube and not just YouTube, but just like everything that's out there that from the YouTube videos, to the blog posts, the different podcasts, there's so much out there. And yet we are still getting people looking specifically for the information that we had to share. Yeah. Yes. The audience is absolutely there without question. Again, our numbers are going up. We're finding more of them. We get mm-hmm. more emails, Colin, in the, I think the last six months than we probably did, you know, in years combined. Yeah, previously. no, for sure. Yeah. What we've seen in the last six months, both in terms of downloads, the communications back and forth, the interactions with their audience, far outpacing anything that we experienced in the previous two and a half years. Yeah, been really, really interesting. Something else that I found with creating the podcast and and I don't want to minimize this, but it's now no longer as challenging as it was to create and make the podcast. Colin, when you and I sat down, we started a Zoom session and in about 45 seconds, we're like, okay, let's go. And we're recording. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's because we've learned. Yeah. I think you and I understand rhythm, pace. Yep. We kind of know what we're going to do. We've got our thing kind of set. But we aren't growing and developing as much as I think we used to when we Mm -hmm. were doing this. Yeah, I would agree with that. You know, that which we persist in doing becomes easier, right? Mm -hmm. Not because the nature of the task has changed, but your capacity to do has increased, right? Yeah. That's Emerson for you. And it's a true principle, right? That's what we experience in, in fitness. You know, the more you lift heavy things, the better you get at lifting heavy things. But it gets to a point where you can't lift heavier things unless you try to push yourself beyond your limits. And I think that's what you're getting at is that we're not being pushed anymore. You and I, we've done so many of these now over the last three years that it's just, it's kind of, it's just normal. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. It's even normal for my family. They see it on the calendar. They're like, oh, dad's Mm -hmm. recording. The house gets quiet. People go upstairs. (laughs) They start like, I don't have to do any, you know, because they know they've been, we've been doing this long enough. So that's been a really fascinating transition. So something else, Colin, that's happened that has not left me, it's like an idea planted deep in my brain, like Inception. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like way in there is the interview we did with Jack Leepert where he introduced how he created, along with many others, Talent Marketplace. Yeah. Essentially because he wrote a paper. That concept that an airman wrote a paper and it changed the Air Force has like bored into me deeply. And... I can't shake it. And not just any airman, like not a, you know, 06, 07, you know, at the top at the highest echelons, but a brand new lieutenant working at the Pentagon. Yeah. We talked about this in our year two review, that a big thing that I had learned that year was how important each of us are and our ability to influence Mm -hmm. this great, massive government organization that we're a part of. But this episode in particular has just stuck with me. And it's something that's really gathered a lot of my attention and something I've been thinking about and thinking about for the whole last year. And it continues to consume a lot of my time and brain power. Been an interesting year for me. No, for sure. And I think that it's important that people understand that one person can have an impact, right? Now, that doesn't mean every one person will have an impact and everybody needs to stay, not necessarily stay in their lane, but, you know, focus on the the things that matter most right now. 
that's relative to their job or their preparation to join the Air Force or whatever. But don't think that you can't take on a little bit extra something. You know, he wrote that on his own time. It wasn't his primary duty. It became part of his primary duties. But he just goes to show the impact that one person can have. What are your thoughts, Colin? What are the things you learned this year? Oh, man. So there's this phrase that runs through my head so often is that it's easier to be 100% cons consistent than 98%. That if you allow yourself just a little bit of leeway in some things, that leeway is going to grow. You know, give a mouse a cookie kind of thing. You know, for the purposes of what we're talking about here, it's so much easier to produce a weekly podcast or an every other weekly podcast, the thing that you say you're going to do 100% of the time, than it is to say, oh, we're going to let one go. Because once you've let it go, it like like things start to unravel, yeah. <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. And that has just been um, proven to me where we have been incredibly consistent with our episodes and not consistent <laughs> with other things yeah. that we allowed ourselves to, to have that leeway, right? And I'm not saying one is right or wrong. When you commit to something, it's much, much easier to be 100% consistent and committed than it is to be 98% committed yeah. and consistent. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. I've never heard that phrase, but when you describe it, I'm reflecting back on things that I've done and experiences I've had, and I'm seeing, seeing that correlation. Yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah. And then I wanted to talk about quality over quantity. I think that our, I don't know exactly how many episodes we've done this last year. I'm guessing it's 26, which is half of 52, right? Every other week, I think that our 26 episodes that we've done this last year are way better than had we done 52, right? I think that the space that we created for ourselves to focus on solid content and to learn from it in between was really useful. And I want to expand that principle of quality over quantity to other things that benefit from that type of focus, relationships. Is it better for you to have, you know, five really, really good, close friends, family members that you, that you can just, you're ride or die kind of people, or to have 500 close acquaintances? 500 people is probably too much for you to have any meaningful relationship with them. And I think that you can take that into the military, into the Air Force, that you know, say you're in a command position or a DO position that you just don't have the bandwidth to interact with every single person in the squadron. And so you're going to rather look for the people that you can develop a really good quality, deep, meaningful relationship with to move the squadron forward. I don't know. What do you think on that? This is something that I feel so deeply, this idea of quality over quantity. I could go on and on and on. So my wife is a small business owner mm -hmm. and she's a professional organizer. She makes people's kitchens, pantries, dressers, closets, garages, basements. She helps people get rid of stuff. And so decluttering. Like Marie Kondo kind of thing? Oh, yeah. She was doing Marie Kondo before. Well, not quite before Marie Kondo, but she read her book before it was popular. We've been doing this stuff in our life for decades before yeah. we knew there was a market for it. We are all about this about having one good thing versus 25 meh things, mm -hmm. about having one great experience instead of a bunch of tiny little ones. Yeah, this is something that is really central to my identity <laughs> is this <Yeah>. idea <laughs> of quality over quantity. And so, yeah, you are absolutely speaking to me on this part, for sure. Yeah, yeah you mentioned experiences, wholeheartedly agree there. I wanna go back to the idea of content. You know, there are so many books and podcasts and articles and videos and so many, you know, just content, media. And sometimes it's hard to find the quality within all of the quantity, but it's there. And if you'll take the time and be willing to like, you know, just stop reading a, a book that's not adding value or turn off a video or a series that you're just like, yeah, it's not doing it for me. Then you can have the bandwidth that you need, the space wherein you can find that better content. You can develop those deeper, more meaningful relationships. You can find those experiences. And so that's something that, you know, in all of my craziness of the last year, 
that I've held on to. Yeah, no, that's really good. Just the last thing I've mentioned it before, bring it up again, uh, just how important it is. And this is related, obviously, is creating that white space, that idea that we got from A Minute to Think by Julia Funt, her book. That's a quality book. Go read it, which will enable you to saturate, incubate, illuminate. Again, that comes from another great book, Mission the Men and Me by Pete Blaber. And in creating that white space, it enables you to to saturate, incubate, illuminate so that you can focus on what it is that you want to do next. And I think that there is where we can you know, talk with the audience about what it is that we hope to accomplish the next year, what it is that we are looking forward to. Yeah. And so it is with no small effort, no small consideration on our part, Colin, this was a, a pretty big decision that we spent a lot of time on. Our goal for next year does not include the Commission Ed podcast. Um, we are not going to be producing more original content, whether in this form or in any other for this specific podcast. Yeah. This was a hard call and yet not at all at the same time in a really <laughs> fascinating sort of way, right? We both felt the need for change, but like you said, easier to be 100% than consistent than 98%, like just stopping something that's moving, it's going to take effort. We're actually going to have to try, Yeah, which is weird. Like it's developed its own momentum. Clearly. I mean, yeah, the, it just keeps- Look at the numbers. <laughs> yeah, the numbers are growing, <laughs> but it's time. Something yeah. Colin, you and I have talked about when we did our episodes on when to stop being an officer mm -hmm. is you would know it's time to hang it up and it's time. Yeah, it is. And that's hard to say, right? There is a definitely an emotional investment in this podcast, if not all of the actual resources and time and money and effort that have been expended. And so to say that we're not going to continue doing that when it's continuing to grow, it's showing fruit, it, <laughs> right? Yeah. When you look at our plots, Colin, you can go in, in some of our tools and we can't show this for the audience. It's a straight up linear growth. Mm -hmm. It is just going up, 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 up at a very consistent rate. And it's like, we could keep going. We could, we could, Colin. Yeah. I just, and we'll talk about this in yeah. our last episode. Yeah, so this is not the last one. Yes, we will have one more episode after this where we'll give a lot of the why. We've always tried to explore and emphasize how important that is. And so we're going to do that for you. Mm -hmm. But there are reasons, even though it's yeah. still growing. So we're not going to do the podcast, but we are going to continue to answer email. That is a goal for the next year, that we will continue to answer the email and social media questions that come through until they don't come through anymore. We'll yeah. see how long that takes. Mm hmm we are not going to post on social media anymore. Zero value added, my friend. Yeah, it's... Uh, I don't get any benefit. I don't know that our audience gets any benefit from our Facebook and, and Instagram accounts. We'll still be there. Like if you, you can reach out to us there, but that's not where we produce our content. Yeah. And doesn't seem that there's any reason for us to continue doing that. Well, especially when you compare the number of eyeballs on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> so, so on that, the YouTube channel will continue to exist. We have a goal, maybe, to move our podcast content over to the YouTube channel so that it still persists. All of our episodes are not there yet. We'll put the yet there in pencil. You know, we'll kind of see how things shake up. But we are not going to be producing new or original content. Right. And on that, you know, eventually, we don't know exactly when. We're still investigating all this. The podcast, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or any of those other podcast directories, it will be taken down from there. So eventually we're going to have everything on YouTube because that's where the eyeballs are, right? Yeah, absolutely. So there we are. Yeah, that's it for this episode. Yeah. So we don't want to leave it quite there. Like we said, we've got one more episode where we will review our favorite moments and give you all the reasons why. Again, this is important. When you make decisions, you need to understand who you are and understand your reasons for doing them. Otherwise, you're just being reactionary and emotional, and maybe that's not exactly helpful. And so this was helpful for us to go through the exercise. But yeah, that's our big news. Thank you for joining us for as long as you've been a part of 
enjoyed this podcast. It's been an amazing ride. And uh, Colin, I think that'll wrap it up for this week. Yeah, for sure. So don't go away. Stick around. We got one more episode for you. But until then, thanks for listening to this week's episode of Commissioner.